crafting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder. Today I am stopping in with a coloring video and I know this is one of the most requested videos on my channel. So thanks to you guys who hang in there for the coloring. I really enjoy stopping in to do these once in a while. And I apologize that I don't get to them very often, even though they're much requested. Sometimes because of my filming setup, I have a limited amount of time that I have access to this space. So videos that require a long amount of time to make, time lapses and coloring videos and stuff like that are a little trickier. But I try when I can to stop in and honor those requests, even if it's just for a small portion of a page. So I hope you guys find this fun and helpful today. I'm going to be working today in Kanoko Igusa's Minuet de Bonheur. I know I'm not saying it right. I'm so thoroughly Midwestern, Northwestern, I don't know. <laughs> but I have been working today on some strawberries. Don't those look delicious? And it's summer, so I thought maybe we'd stop in today and I'd do a quick tutorial on how I do a strawberry or a moderately shiny object. I think I think this principle I'm about to show you could carry over to a variety of objects, actually. I'm gonna go back. I did a little test work on this page with all the fruit on it because it had so many strawberries for me to work on. I came up with a couple of color schemes that I'll share with you guys today um, if you're interested in combining some colors without doing a ton of experimenting. I came up with sort of a red strawberry here and sort of a pinker strawberry here and here because I wanted to see um, how my different reds would work. So this one is slightly more yellow. These are definitely pinker. So if you're more interested in doing a red strawberry, you might try 937, 924, 922, and 1018. I'll get you a little more in the center there. If you want a pinker strawberry, maybe try 937, 924, 926, and 1018. And then for the seeds, I just popped in with a 1082, which is a bit of a brownish shade, and a 915, which is a bright yellow. So those are minimally used. And then you may also want to grab, if you're coloring along with me, um, a black and a white. I think that's always a handy, those are handy pencils to have. So a while back, I started the cover page of this book, and I've sort of been holding off doing a lot of extra work since because I wanted to sort of do it with you guys. Um, but I started on the macaroon in one video, and I'll link that in the cards. It's called um, Prismacolor Premier Tips for Adult Colorists. And I colored this and, and gave some things that I've learned along the way. So if you're new to coloring or you're interested in that, check the cards up top. Today I want to jump into this second strawberry. So I decided on this page, because the theme is going to be a bit more pastel, to go with the pinker strawberry. So that's what I did up here. And I'm going to attempt to do something similar down at the bottom here. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. Pardon the road construction. If you're a frequent viewer of the channel, you know. That's something I'm battling with all the time in every video. <laughs> All right, so my principles when I start out coloring a section, the first thing I always do is to lay in my values. So what I wanna make sure I do is preserve the white space or the white sections um, in my object, whatever it might be. So my light source on this is coming from basically the front. And so I know I want this strawberry to have a nice bright highlight right on the top and then, of course, the sides are going to be a little darker. So I'm going to actually work from dark to light here. And what I'm going to do is just lay in my values very lightly. So with a very, very light hand, I'll come in with my darkest shades. Now, you may see me speed up some sections of this just because, you know, I'm not giving instruction. So... We'll move through it a little quicker maybe than last time. One thing I do like to do when I am coloring something like a strawberry that has, like I said, a semi-shiny surface, 
is to actually leave a bit of white space around the edges so it looks like there's some reflected light coming up from the background. So even though the edges here are rather dark as far as the line work that Kanoko has done, I might leave a little bit of a reflective um, bit of light along my edge here and possibly along my edge here, but we'll see what looks right to my eye as I go along. I think you always have to trust your eye because remember your eye sees objects like this every day. We just sort of have to get into the habit of noticing what they really look like. So after I've laid in my darkest shade really lightly, I'm gonna to go to the next darkest, which in this case is 924. The first was 937. Now I'm at 924 and I'm just gonna go around the outside edges of my darker area very lightly. So I'm laying in basically, when I say values, I'm talking about what areas are going to be in shadow and what areas are gonna be highlighted. I'm actually gonna skip over now to this light pink because I wanna make sure I preserve my white space. So I'm gonna come in a tiny bit on the edge of my reflection there. And then I just want to see where my eye wants to put a bit of a circular highlight here. I think it really helps to look at reference photos when you're coloring any kind of real world object because you'll really get to see how that object looks in real life. So because my highlight on my macaroon here is a little bit toward the, the front but downward facing edge, I'm gonna move my highlight to about right here. Not move it, I'm gonna place it there. I don't have to move anything. And then I'm just gonna leave some dead white space in the center of that. Okay, and I wanna make sure I do that now so that I don't color over it. I'm gonna make it purposeful. All right, now I'm gonna go back in with my third lightest shade. So this is 926. And I'm gonna work along the edges of where I put my shadow. So I'm gradually going to deepen my shadows as I go and brighten my highlights. I guess I can't make them any brighter than white, but what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna preserve my highlights as I go, hopefully. That's the goal anyway. Okay, so now back to my lightest color and I'm just gonna blend into the edges here of my highlight a bit. And I'm probably gonna come in actually a bit more around this highlight with my redder color. All right, so when I talk about blocking in my values, that's what I mean. So I have a basic idea now of where my shadows and light are gonna live so that I know what areas I'm gonna to try to deepen and what areas I'm gonna to try to preserve white. Okay, so my next step is always doing some more layering. So I'm gonna go back from dark to light now. I'm gonna darken up all the shadows again. And basically I work in, in order. So dark to light. And I'm always creating um, some kind of shadow with my dark and then gradually expanding the shadow as I move to my lighter colors, okay?
Now once I sort of complete a pass or two going darker to lighter, I'm just gonna look and see what my eye thinks this needs at this point. So I was thinking there that I needed a bit more of this bright carmine red. That's the 926 inside the body of this strawberry just to brighten up the color a little bit and make it a bit pinker. So that's what I'm doing now. And then I'm gonna go back to working um, dark to light again until this is as saturated as I want it to be. Now the biggest role that your light colored pencil always plays is in blending all of your other colors together. So when I'm getting close to having my object as saturated as I want it to be, I often go back with my lightest shade of pencil and go over all the layers um, of my colors. This just seems to blend everything together without having to use any kind of blending pencil and kind of makes the whole thing look a little more cohesive. Do remember though, if you go over your dark colors again, make sure you color off the tip of your pencil because you can transfer some of that dark color into your highlight if you're not careful. Now when you're nearing the end of coloring your object, I think one thing that is really helpful to do is to actually just walk away for a moment, take a little break, think about something else, look at something else, and then come back and just observe what your first impression is when you look back. Oftentimes you'll notice something you didn't see before, like maybe a, a particular highlight, um, is too too large and you need to fill it in a bit more or maybe your whole color is skewing a little bit one way so you need to add some more red so when I when I took a break from this and looked back at it again I noticed that I wanted this to be a little more truly red so I'm just grabbing this um, crimson red the 924 and adding a little bit more of that so that I get more of the shade that I want So you saw me make that highlight a bit less dramatic as I went along. And it's always good to preserve more highlight at first, I think, than you think you might need. Because then you can always make this area smaller, but of course, once you've colored over the paper, you can't make it larger. Okay, I think I'm pretty close to where I want to be color-wise now. I do wish that I had made this highlight a bit more um, vertical, if that makes sense, so it went a little bit more along the ridge line of the strawberry here. But 
live and learn. I'm not a professional. I am just a hobbyist, and so I find that many times when I color something, there's something I, I wish that I had done a little differently. But I think that's all part of the learning process and part of what makes this so much fun, is that it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to be artists to have fun being artistic and creative. So there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna go back in with a white pencil and just blend around some of the ed edges of my um, reflected light here from the background just to sort of blend any speckles that I might have going on from the tooth of my paper and then I might pop in with a little bit of blending in my highlight as well and then I'm going to come in with my black and I use this just to darken up the very deepest areas so maybe around the leaves here where Kanoko has already drawn in some shadow lines for us. And then maybe a bit along some of these shadows around the edges. But when I use black, I wanna be very careful that I'm not too heavy handed. And then I just always go back and blend with my light light shades. I'm going to grab some of my deepest red and just go over those shadows just to make sure that that has a reddish tone. If you're not comfortable using black, purple is another great way to shade reds. Of course, depending on the lighting in your picture. And then I'm just gonna work dark to light one more time. Kind of blend it all together. The secret to a good blend with Prismacolors is always to do many, many light layers of pencil. So if you're struggling to get a good blend on just one or two layers, that's totally normal, I think. It takes, I can't, I've lost count of how many layers were on here, but upwards of 10 to 12, I would say, depending on the kind of paper that you work with. All right, I think I'm really happy with the saturation that we have there and the blend we have. Um, so I'm gonna go on and just add some of our seeds. So this is the 915, it's a really bright yellow. And of course I don't have to color every single one of these. This is such a light shade that you're not gonna see it anyway. But I think especially in um, the highlight areas, this little pop of yellow is gonna be really cute. And then I did also add down at the bottom here. Just a tiny bit of yellow. You know when you have a strawberry that's sort of ripening up and it's got that little bit of green and yellow at the bottom? I thought that might look cute there. So I added just a bit of that. And then I'm gonna come in with my chocolate um, 1082 and I'm just gonna put a very small shadow around the bottom of some of these seeds in a very light-handed fashion. So it helps on this to have a really, really sharp pencil. Mine is, mine is not super sharp. But I don't want to run and get my sharpener. We're so close to being done, I don't want to stop now. <laughs> so just sort of a little, a little U-shaped shadow around some of these little seeds just so we can see they're there, basically. You'll know, you'll know when you're 
when you have enough there and you're ready to be done. I think there's always a danger, just like in wearing too much jewelry out of your house. <laughs> the old rule where you take off one piece before you leave the house. This is sort of similar in that I think you don't want to go too far um, on anything. Do just enough, right? All right, that tiny little detail made this strawberry very cute. I hope you guys enjoyed our coloring video today. Huge thanks to Kanoko Aguza for her permission letting me show her book on my channel. As always, when I show artist work on my channel, it's important to me that you visit the website down in the description below and support them. If I can find a link to this book and it's still available, I'll also put that down in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope there's some summer weather wherever you are. And I hope, I hope something just absolutely fabulous happens in your life. <laughs> Sending lots of love to all of you. As always, spread some joy wherever you are, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.